my name is Ava McCarthy and I'm a junior at St. Vincent de Paul College Preparatory High School. And this is my presentation on the United States Marine Corps bronze sculpture titled Amphibious Assault, Inchon, 1950, sculpted by Fred Press. The Battle of Inchon, also known as Operation Chromite, occurred during the Korean War, September 15th through 19th, 1950. General Douglas MacArthur planned a surprise amphibious landing to outwit North Korean forces. The UN troops successfully landed behind the enemy lines at Incheon, and despite the many challenges they faced, the landing caught North Korean forces off guard. This landing altered the course of the war tremendously, enabling further UN advances in Northern Korea. And by recognizing these sculptures, we can further appreciate our beautiful country and its history, and preserve and honor the men and women who will and have served our beautiful country. I have prepared a slideshow on the events depicted in the sculpture, and I hope you find it intriguing and valuable. Thank you. After World War II, in 1945, Korea was freed from Japanese control. North Korea was occupied by the Soviet Union, while South Korea was occupied by American forces. North and South Korea were still at odds because of the border between them. They did not accept it as permanent. After five years of building tension in Korea, the Korean War started on June 25, 1950. The Northern Korean People's Army attacked South Korea along the 38th parallel. They invaded because they wanted to take over South Korea and make the entire country under communist rule. The United States got involved because Truman believed that if one country fell to communism, then the others would follow, like a line of dominoes. Thus came about the domino theory. This was probably the most important reason for America's involvement in the war. South Korea appealed for help and the United States pushed for a potential solution through the United Nations Security Council. An appeal was made for North Korea to withdraw its troops, but this appeal was ignored. Here you can see the United States' courses of action with respects due to Korea. This can be found in the Truman Library. As a result of this, approval was granted to the United Nations Army to send help to North Korea, commanded by General Douglas MacArthur. The UN troops were in South Korea, but were quickly pushed back by North Korean forces, which made them form a perimeter around Pusan. On September 15th, the 1st Marine Division launched an amphibious assault at Incheon. The North Korean troops were pushed back over the 38th parallel. This was a crucial turning point for the conflict. General MacArthur wanted to go beyond the point of initial containment. Truman, who was still worried about a communist Chinese response to all of this, approved troops into North Korea on October 7, 1950. Five days later, they captured Pyongyang, the North Korean capital, and also captured Yalu River, which was the border between North Korea and China. After Chinese troops were sent in, by January 1951, Chinese and North Korean troops had captured Seoul. MacArthur was then dismissed for insubordination and Truman went back to the original idea of containment. Eventually, after more UN troops were sent back to North Korea, they were able to move North Korea to the 38th parallel and stabilize the front. From then until the end of the fighting, not much had changed. It was a stalemate. Peace talks had begun, but no compromises could be found. President Eisenhower, who took office in 1953, sought an end to the war. He played to the strengths of America, diplomacy and military strengths, in an attempt to end the fighting. Finally, on June 27, 1953, an armistice was signed. And so, the fighting stopped, but Korea still remained divided. The Korean War emphasized that the United States was powerful and would stand up against aggression. The Korean War was a turning point for the United States Armed Forces, especially the United States Marine Corps. The Marines' ability to adapt to the changing battlefield conditions of the Korean War showcased their mobility and flexibility, which played a crucial role in advancing and retaking territory for North Korean forces. Most notably, the amphibious assault was a remarkable strategy and the troops' execution demonstrated their capability to conduct such amphibious operations. And finally, not only did these troops display remarkable grit and courage, they were representing the resilience and overall strength of America.